Everything we've learned so far is good for behavioral testing. But what if we want to make an experiment that we can use in the MRI scanner? The first thing you need to know is that scanners send a code signalizing the start of the experiment. We need to make sure that the scanner and the experiment are synchronized by creating an object that is triggered by the pulse. Copy the EXP instructions object and call it Weight Scanner and place it after the EXP instructions. In the text box, type waiting for scanner. For the allowable response, you will need to consult your scanner technician. The trigger code can vary from scanner to scanner, but usually it's a character like the backtick. Since the backtick is a special character in E-prime, we need to surround it with braces. For an fMRI experiment, you will also want jitters, or variable timing between trials. This allows you to estimate the shape of the HRF for each condition. To do this, create a list within the EXP Stroop list. Under Nested, write Jitter List. This will create a new list. Open up Jitter List, make three new levels, and create an attribute called Jitter. Enter jitters of 1000 to 4000 milliseconds. Make the selection random. Then, in the EXP fixation object, replace the duration field with the Jitter attribute. What this means is that on each trial, a level in EXP Stroop list will be selected, and the attributes selected from that level. Then, the program will go into the nested list, jitter list, and randomly select a level and set the jitter attribute. This jitter attribute will then be used by the EXP fixation object. Lastly, we can write out our timing information into text files that will be used by our analysis software. Different packages have different timing formats, but the following information is almost always used. Run number, condition name, condition onset time, and condition duration. These timings need to be relative to the start of the scanner pulse, which is the same as when the weight scanner object terminates. Create a new variable in the user script called start timestamp and declare it as a double. Next, we need to mark when the pulse occurred Open Weight Scanner, select Logging, and check RT Time. This marks the time when a response occurred, in this case, when the scanner sent a pulse. Next, put an inline object after the Weight Scanner object and call it Get Scan Pulse. To save time, I already made it and stored it in the unreferenced folder, so I'm going to click and drag it. First, create the variable Start Timestamp and set it equal to the attribute weightscanner.rttime. This makes it easier to use in other inline objects. Second, write the following code to create a text file. It will only be created if it is the first session and the ampersands concatenate the text with the variable. In this case, if our subject attribute was one, then the text file would be called onsettimes underscore one dot txt. The next line prints the column headers. Then close the file until we need it later. The number one represents the file name. Now let's alter the timing modes of the experimental slides. Usually an MRI run will end after a predetermined amount of time. In this case, we want the overall amount of time in the experiment to be constant. So we set the timing mode in both slides to cumulative. We will also be using the RT time and duration attributes for the following code. So make sure both of those are checked as well. Next, put an inline object after the EXP Stroop Slide object and enter the following code. Again, I already have this made, so I'm going to click and drag it. What this code does is open up the text file and in each column writes the run number, condition name, condition onset time, and duration. Furthermore, note that I log both the onset of the Stroop Slide and also the motor response to account for both sources of variance, the incongruency and the button press. There's one last thing we need to do. Remember pre-release? That's the amount of time used by the current object to set up the next object. For example, if we had a pre-release of 500, then this slide would wait until there's 500 milliseconds remaining and then begin loading the next object while still presenting the current object. The problem is, if we have an inline code right after the slide, then it will be run during the pre-release. 
This could be a problem if, for example, the subject makes a response during the pre-release period. The timing information would be written to the text file even though no response had been logged yet. We could set the pre-release to zero, in which case we would definitely have the information we need to write the timing file, but which could also lead to drifts in the timing, as the loading of the next object adds time to the overall experiment. A good compromise is to set a pre-release high enough to load the next object without timing error, but low enough to be extremely unlikely to miss the subject's response. Let's set it at 30 milliseconds. Now, run the experiment. It's the same as before, but now there's jitter, a variable amount of time between the trials. Once it's over, notice that a text file is created in the directory. This has all of our timing information in one place, which can then be parsed and used in the analysis software of your choice. So that's it. You've learned the fundamentals of E prime and E basic. It's a lot of material, a lot of knowledge, but with the concepts of objects, object-oriented programming, and some simple eBasic script, you can make your experiments very flexible and even adapt them to an fMRI scanning experiment. As always, leave a comment down below if there's anything else you'd like to see. Videos about more stuff in eProime, or neural imaging, or statistics, or whatever. In the meantime, good luck with eProime, and I'll see you guys soon.